All right, here we are again to answer your Bible questions. I'm Michael Pearl, No Greater Joy Ministries, and uh, we've been getting so many questions. One of the questions that we get quite often framed different ways is, do the Christians go through the tribulation? Is the tribulation and the second coming the same thing? Are they different? Uh, so that's what I'm going to answer today. In fact, it, there, there's so much scripture on it, it's like it's just everywhere. It's just the whole Bible. Uh, so it's difficult. It would take me hours and hours to give you all the scripture on it, but no question about it that Christians do not go through the seven years of great tribulation. Now, this is my uh, studio where I paint, and I just thought it'd be a good spot. I got lights and everything here. But this is the book of Revelation that I did some time back. I painted this. The original is about um, eight, nine feet long. And uh, this is a reproduction we've done. Can you see the whole thing in the, in the camera okay? We've reproduced this because so many people ask for it. You can use it in your Bible studies. It's got everything in the book of Revelation. You've got your verse markings here. This is chapter 7. talks about the interval, the golden censers, chapter 8, 1, the angel blowing the trumpet, 11, 13, so forth. So it's the entire book of Revelation painted from beginning to end. makes a really good study guide. In fact, we have a study guide that goes with it. And so I'm going to answer the question, do Christians go through the tribulation? Now, do, there's so many different ways of doing it. I'm just going to take, for brief, for brevity, I'm just going to take one section, one little point, and answer it from the book of Revelation. So this is going to be scripture. If you're not interested in scripture, you won't be interested in my answer. And I'm going to show you exactly what the Bible says, okay? Now, in the book of Revelation, uh, the first three chapters repeatedly talk about the church. In fact, they, it gives the name of seven different local churches that the Apostle John ministered to. And with each church, John gives a very specific statement to that church, talks about their problems, talks about their needs, and addresses them. He promises them if they'll overcome that they'll be uh, granted uh, name or be written in the book of life, uh, New Jerusalem, come down into heaven, so forth. And then he also promises one of the churches that if they uh, endure, if they uh, persevere, that they will not experience the tribulation that's going to come. He will, he will save them from the hour of temptation that's going to come upon the whole earth. And then you come to chapter 4, verse 1. And John has an experience that's uh, like the rapture. He said, I looked and behold, a, a door was open in heaven and the voice I heard spoke with the trumpet said, come up hither and I'll show thee the things which must be hereafter. And so then John is taken into heaven and uh, through chapter 19, chapter four through chapter 19, which is what we've painted right here. This is where chapter four starts and uh, it takes us all the way through 19. So this period of time is called Jacob's Troubles or the Great Tribulation. So during this time of prophesied Jacob's Troubles or the Great Tribulation, seven and a half years, the latter half of it is called the Great Tribulation. And that's the time when the vials are poured out and all sorts of judgments take place upon the earth. One fourth of the world's population is killed, one half the world's population, so forth. So there's only about a tenth of the world's population left. At the end of that seven years of tribulation, the Christians have been raptured up to heaven here and experienced seven and a half years in Christ's presence. The marriage of the Lamb takes place, we have painted here, and then the saints come back to the earth with Christ on a white horse. At that point, Christ comes back and confronts the nations, and a final battle takes place when he slays the armies of the world in the valley of Megiddo in Jerusalem, slays them with the sword of his mouth. At that point, the tribulation saints are raised, and that begins the thousand-year millennial reign of Christ upon the earth. Now, here's what's fascinating in the book of Revelation. The first four chapters, and that's painted from here to here, the first four chapters, first, excuse me, first three chapters, have the seven churches. When you get to the seven-sealed book and it's opened up, the church is never mentioned anywhere in here except it's mentioned in heaven one time. Chapter 4 is mentioned in heaven where people from every tongue, tribe, kindred, and nation who were redeemed to God by the blood of the Lamb are around the throne praising God. So the Christians, the saints, are in heaven. 
while the great tribulation is going on down on earth. Israel is mentioned. In fact, the whole thing is about Israel and judgment upon Israel, about Jerusalem, about uh, uh, the land there that we call the Holy Land. All, all of this takes place there. But not once does it mention the church. Never. Not once does it mention any of these. There's no exhortation to them to prepare for this tribulation. There's no exhortation to them that they need to endure through it. And yet there is exhortation in other places in Scripture that if anyone receives the mark of the beast, which we have painted right here, 666, receives his mark, his number, or his name, they'll be damned. Anyone. And so the only ones who will survive this tribulation, very, very few people, will be those who refuse the mark of the beast. Not people who are born again or saved or Christians, just the people who refuse the mark of the beast. An unsaved atheist could refuse to take this mark, die a martyr's death, and he'll be raised to endure during the millennium. But anyone else that receives it, no matter who they are, they can be a professing Christian, they can be a preacher, they'll receive that mark, they'll be damned. I, I kind of laugh at people today, <laughs> Christians are... Christians are conscious of, of uh, the little marks on uh, groceries when you buy them, the little barcodes, and, and they used to talk about uh, getting stamps in the back of the hand or uh, getting little, uh, what they, uh, inject into your little uh, microchip so they can read it, and they all fear that's the mark of the beast. Uh, listen, if you're a born-again Christian, you don't have to worry about that. It won't take place until three and a half years after you're gone. And raptured out. So I'm just going to show you a few of the passages here in the book of Revelation. It don't take too long. Chapter 5. Now, here it says, And they sung a new song. And this is, this is the people in heaven. Thou art worthy to take the book, to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain, hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred, tongue, people, and nation. See, that's not Israel. Because every tongue, every people, every kindred, every nation, not just the nation of Israel, and has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. So that's the Christians in heaven gathered around the throne, thousands upon thousands and ten thousands, millions and millions and millions, it says, gathered around the throne, are going to come back and reign with Christ. He told the apostles, if you're faithful over a few things, I'll make you ruler over many things. He talked about some of them being ruled over one city, some over ten cities. During that millennial reign of Christ upon the earth, this is called the kingdom of heaven. And Christ's kingdom comes back and captures the kingdom of heaven. And he said, we shall reign on the earth. And they go on and they praise him. Now, you come to chapter 6, and you got a different group of people. He said, verse 6, and, and when he opened the fifth seal, the fifth seal would be like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 right here, which is souls under the altar. Here's the altar right here. And you can see the little eyes. I didn't know how to paint a soul under an altar. So I put a bunch of little eyes under the altar there. So he said... Uh, and I uh, saw, saw the souls under the altar and those which were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. This chapter and other chapters talk about how heads will be cut off. So you see pictures of heads lying around here and a bloody corpse right here. So the Antichrist will re-establish uh, uh, the guillotine and chop the heads off of anyone who refuses to receive that mark are the number or the name of the beast. So these are people during the tribulation. And it says, and they cried with a loud voice. Now these are dead people already under the altar. Now you say, where's the altar? The altar is in heaven. That's the altar at the throne of God uh, that we will see at another time. He said, uh, and the souls of them cried with a loud voice, holy, 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 how long dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? So these dead old dead tribulation saints, which would be some of the 144,000, anyone who wasn't saved during the tribulation, didn't hear about Jesus Christ, didn't reject him, uh, never heard before, some of them will believe during this seven-year period. Many of the Jews which never heard will believe during this seven-year period. And those that believe and refuse the mark have their heads cut off, their souls will be under the altar, and they cried, uh, and white robes were given, unto, this is Revelation 6, 11, white robes were given to every one of them, that's very key, 
And it was said unto them that they should rest for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren, that's Jews, should be killed as they were and should be fulfilled. So they're told to wait until this little while, this tribulation is over with. At that point, the unsaved, I mean, excuse me, the, the saved tribulation saints will be resurrected at that point. Now, when you come to chapter 7, uh, he says, I saw the fourth angel stand on the four corners, so forth, so forth. And he says, and he said, hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, till we've sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. So here's some people that God's going to protect. This is the people God's going to protect uh, for a period of time during the seven years. And I heard the number of them that were sealed, and there were sealed 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. So the 144,000 that are sealed, all are Jews, all male virgins. They will be like Apostle Paul's going throughout the whole world and preaching the gospel to everyone. Now, but the tribe of Benjamin was sealed, the tribe of Reuben was sealed, 12,000, the tribe of Gad, the tribe of Asher, Nephtali, Manasseh, of Simeon, Levi were sealed, 12,000, 12,000, Zebulon, 12,000, Benjamin, 12,000. So he makes it very clear, names each tribe by name, and says it's 12,000. I'm sorry, Jehovah's Witnesses, you're not included in this. You're not part of the 144,000. No born-again Christian is part of the 144,000, especially not a Jehovah's Witness who does not believe that Jesus is God. Chapter 7, verse 9, After this I beheld and lo, a great multitude. So that's after this killing of these Christians, having their heads cut off uh, right here, decapitated. Uh, after this I beheld, Lord, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations, kindreds, people, and tongues. So there be uh, people of every nation, kindred, and tongue, refuse the mark of the beast and be killed, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes. Remember he said a white robe would be given to them? And palms in their hands, and they cried, saying, Salvation to our God who sitteth upon the throne under the Lamb. And the angel stood about the throne, and one of the elders answered and said, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? Now this is the 24 elders, 12 of which are for the church and 12 of which are for Israel. And they will be like, um, they will be like governors in heaven. They will be the elders. So if you want to go right to God's throne, you got to talk to one of the elders and get permission to only get too crowded around the throne at one time. Uh, or if you say, I, I need to, I want to create a planet somewhere, you go to one of the elders, tell him your idea, and he takes it to the Father and decide if you're going to get to go create a planet somewhere. So that's the elders. That's their role. So um, where was I? 40? Uh, to, uh, her, okay, back, uh, of, uh, let's see. Okay, here it is. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? So the elder turns and asks John, who's been transported into heaven, who is this group of people? Now, he knows who the Christians are. He's, he's part of the group raptured to heaven. But he didn't know who this group is. And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. You see, I don't know, you know. He said unto me, These are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. That's something Christians don't have to do. We have been born again by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, and we are made white ourselves, not just our robes. And so we don't need to wash our robes. But these, these, these people were not born again yet, who, who died during the tribulation. They were not born again yet. So they washed their robes, make them white in the blood of the Lamb, and they come up before the throne of God, having their souls under the altar at first. Therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in the temple. And he that sits upon the throne shall dwell with them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst. The emphasis there is that during the tribulation, people were very hungry and very thirsty. Uh, the, the life in the sea was destroyed by something called wormwood. Waters turned to blood. People were very thirsty. Sun sh shone seven times hotter. And so he said, that won't happen anymore. Neither shall the sun light on them nor any heat like the seven times hotter sun. For the lamb which is in the midst of them shall feed them and shall lead them into fountains of living waters and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And so that is 
the tribulation saints getting caught up. Then in chapter 11, and there was given him a reed like a rod, and he said, Rise, measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. So he's told to rise up and measure the temple and the altar. This is what, uh, just like a, a yardstick. And, but the court which is without the temple, leave out and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles. See that little dome of the rock, that mosque of Omar right there? That is still going to be standing during the beginning of the tribulation. That's going to be standing, and, and the temple that's going to be rebuilt is going to be built close to it because that's where it's about 100 yards from there is where it belongs. And there's going to be a wall built which is going to diminish the size. There's prophecy on that in the Old Testament. Don't have time to go into it. That's going to diminish the size of the temple proper because the Gentiles, uh, Arabics, will be on one side and uh, the Jews on the other side worshiping. He said, uh, don't, don't measure it, for it is given unto the Gentiles. That mosque. Uh, and the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. So for three and a half years, this holy city, that's the last three and a half years, is going to be dominated by the Antichrist who's going to sit on the throne, a throne in the Jewish temple for three and a half years. A lot of verses on that. Uh and, uh, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred three score days clothed in sackcloth. So these 144,000 are going to prophesy, and then one by one, they're going to be killed. One by one, these prophets, you see I painted two of them right here, prophesying. These are the two witnesses. One by one, they will be decapitated until there's not a single one of them left. Would you like to be one of the prophets? Everybody wants to be a prophet today. Well, you get to have your head cut off if you're one of God's prophets during the tribulation. All right, now I'm going to stop there. Uh, there's a, with chapter 12, we'll begin with more thoughts on it, but all I did was just skim real quick over this seven-year period to show you that the church is nowhere in any of this. This is about Israel. It's about the temple. It's about the 144,000 Jews. Uh, the church is one thing, Israel is another. The church gets raptured out early, Israel gets saved seven and a half years later. So that's the answer to that. And I'll tell you what, this will be part one. I'll go over and give you a couple, three more of these. I could do 25, 30, 50, 100, going through the whole Bible, showing you that there's pre-tribulational rapture, pre-millennial rapture of the church, which is the biblical view. All right, that's it.